Thank you for joining me for this Coffee with the Editor, sponsored by the Bombella Operating Company, also known as BOC. I'm in the Operation Control Center and I'm joined by Didier. Didier, thank you for joining me. If you could just give me an overview of BOC's uh, you know, operations, it's quite diverse. Our uh, operation uh, with several means of transport is uh, fully integrated to offer our passengers uh, seamless travel from their home to their job or from their home to the shop and back home. So first they will find the bus uh, from their home to the, to the station, then in the station so there is all the equipment for them to purchase the ticket, they then take the train. So during peak hours we have got one train every uh, 10 minutes, during off peak we got one train every 20 minutes, going to their destination and then to their destination they arrive to the station and they, we can offer different types of services, either buses or midi buses, and around the station they can find the taxi, e-hailer, whatever they need. So the system is fully integrated. In fact, it's not only bus or only train, the world is working as a chain for the passenger to get the best way to, to get as fast as possible and as safely as possible to their destination. BOC ensure operational excellence in its services on a daily basis um, and can you give us a glimpse of what happens behind the scenes because like the station closes and we all think that's it but that's not the case at all. Yeah. So there, there is a, an organization uh, that uh, works 24 hours, seven days and which is organized by the minute. Okay. So from 4 a.m. in the morning, we start powering the line. If it has been powered off during the, during the night, we prepare the train, we open the station. Our staff in the station, they are visiting the station to ensure that all the equipment is fit for purpose. Then from 5.30, the train are in the terminal station and we can start the operation. So during the day, it's mainly operation. Uh, there is very few maintenance activities because we don't want to disturb the passengers. So the train running is lasting until uh, the departure from the, the terminals at uh, 8.30 p.m. in the evening. Then the train come back here in the depot, they stable, and then from 10 p.m. we are starting the operation maintenance. So now all our teams, maintenance of the rolling stock, maintenance of the track, of the power supply, maintenance of the station, they go into, into service. And again, everything is controlled from here, from the operation control center. So from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., all these work are uh, carried out for the system to be fit for purpose again at uh, 4 a.m. the day after. And at 4 a.m. we start again. And how does the global expertise of RATP kind of play a role in enhancing this excellence? With, with uh, RATP we have done this job for more than 70 years now. So when we started the operation uh, back in 2010, and I was here at that time, uh, the experts came from RATP. For instance, we had about 15 experts from operation who started the training of the staff. We trained the local trainers then the local trainers, they continue the job. This is what we, we call the cascade training. Mm -hmm. So all this expertise was transferred. And uh, so at, at the beginning, there was a big number of experts. And now we have got fi 500 uh, employees and I'm, not, I'm the only one from mm -hmm. RATP uh, left here. Okay. So this means all the expertise from RATP has been transferred to the, to the operation and the maintenance here. How do you ensure that BOC prioritizes and ensures the safety of its passengers? And what has been the track record of maintaining safety standards? So, first of all, we need to consider that the safety has been built in the system. Mm. From the design phase and with the expertise of the operator of RHP, but also the expertise of the contractors like uh, Alstom, Bombardier, Bouygues all the companies that were involved in the project, all the, all the safety is already built in the system. As far as we are concerned, our main uh, objective is to ensure maximum safety of the passenger, both safety and performance. In terms of safety, 
uh, we have got a number of rules, of safety rules, on which the, the staff is e educated. And these gold rules, and some of them, we call them golden rules, they are constantly repeated to the staff and we are checking mm. regularly that the staff, through the staff engagement, that the staff, they still comply with these rules. Then the system is providing us records on the safety events or on the events that are happening. So every day we have got uh, experts who are studying and reviewing all these records to be sure that there is uh, no safety issue which has emerged during the, during the operation. Given BOC's extensive um, expertise in multimodal transport networks and drawing from the experience um, and DNA of the parent company being RATP uh, uh, Dev, how do you envisage the future of an integrated public transport system in South Africa and potentially in the broader region going, you know, for example, into Africa? We've got the buses, we've got the busy buses, we've got the train, uh, in the station you've got the taxis, so already all the systems are integrated. So what is necessary, I think, for this area, uh, there are several uh, transport operators, mm -hmm. is that um, all these transport operators, they need to, to be uh, integrated into a transport scheme. And I guess the transport scheme needs to be uh, uh, created with the integration of all the railway transport, of the bus transport, and taxi transport in the in the in the same system. What is important also, this is something that uh, we have done in Paris, is that the, the the ticketing system is fully integrated and fully interoperable. So with the same ticket or the same card, you can take the train, you can take the bus, and in the future we can envisage that you can also take the taxi, you can take the the Uber or whatever. What is important is to create a transport authority who has got the authority to manage all the, all the transporters and uh, then it will work. So how does the um, BOC maintain flexibility in the system? So from the train planning and the scheduling and then being able to you know, meet that customer demand and then also unique planning you know, for special events. How does that come to be? As an operator and an experienced operator, we are very much flexible. However, this flexibility has got its limitation because we have got a contract and we need to ensure a certain headway during the morning, during the, the day, during the, during the evening. So there are a number of rules that we need to follow according to our contract. This contract is managed by performance, key performance indicators, so we have to stick with it. On a day-to-day -day basis, our flexibility is more into the way we are managing the degraded mode. If we have got a failure, a failure on a train or a failure in the station, so this is where our, our expertise go in line to be able to solve as quickly as possible the incident, to free the track from the failed train and to continue the normal operation. We, we need to stick with the the contractual requirements, yeah. And then being able to, to like get people to the rugby when there's special events, is there anything? The special events for us is the, the opportunity to get out of the bounds of the contract. And then um, at the authority, the GMA and BCC, they ask us to, to make proposal. And then we propose the, the best service possible. And then, then we got the, the flexibility to provide the best service to the, 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 the passengers that need to, to, to be transported to the, to the exhibition center, to the stadium, stadium or wherever. Technology and digitalization are big words that they're being thrown around all the time these days, uh, specifically in the rail sphere. Um, how is the BOC leveraging technology and digitalization and innovation such as you know, integrated ticketing, safe tracker, MIS, um, big data analytics, um, how are you bringing that all together to enhance and improve your service offering and, and customer satisfaction? Yeah, so, so today the, the, the data is critical uh, for, to improve our operational, operation and to monitor the operation. So this, uh, this data is uh, critical and uh, we have been developing tools over the years to, to, uh, to use this, this data and to manage better the 
the operation. So uh, our uh, mother company has developed uh, management information system, MIS, which is called Safe Tracker, which allows to capture all the data related to operation. It can be uh, the performance, the delays, the number of passengers, the revenue, uh, it can be the number of failures on any type of equipment to analyze th this data and to, to convert them into, uh, I would say, uh, indicators. Okay? And then we manage the operation according to these indicators and always try to, to improve the, the indicators. And it's the same for the, the, the passenger satisfaction. There are uh, uh, surveys where we are monitoring as well the, the passenger satisfaction and try to get as much information from them to improve our operation and to uh, get to their needs. Mobility as a service, and I'm talking about you know, the technology around driverless trains, um, the advancements in signaling and, tic and ticketing. Where do you see the future there? Yeah, I think there is uh, no limit to the future, but uh, we must not forget the human factor because the, the presence of staff on the line, the, the assistance that the staff are providing to the, the, the passenger are critical. Mm. However, uh, the technology allows us, for instance, to to operate the system at very high speed, like here, we are operating at 160 km per hour. The technology allows us to get the train as close as possible from each other, so we can improve the, the transport offer. So there are many opportunities. Um, we are very much involved with the contractors, with the, the people who are building the system because we are providing our uh, specification mm. from our group and we ask them to build the system that uh, we want to be the most efficient po uh, possible. Yeah. How is cybersecurity being addressed? Our system here in the OCC is a closed system. So there is no link with the external world. And this is something which is critical. We, we need to avoid any link with the external world because there could be hacking and they could control, the, not control the train, but they could control the power supply, switch off the power supply, these kind of issues. The system have got a safety uh, and se security integrity level, which is uh, sealed for. So the contractors are providing this, uh, this protection of the system. How would BOC achieve seamless coordination and efficiency across its diverse modes of transport, especially considering the contractual nuances of, that would be kind of applied in different countries? Yeah, so, so, so first of all, uh, the mother company, RATP, in Paris, in Paris uh, suburbs, is operating all these systems. So trains, suburban rails, tramway buses. And uh, uh, we are developing the same in our project. So there are some projects, like you mentioned, Morocco, where it is buses and tramway. Other projects, like here, it's train, uh, high-speed train and buses. Other projects, like one we will operate soon in Saudi Arabia, where it is a uh, driverless uh, metro. So in fact, we have got a model in the mother company, and we can use this model on all our projects. And now, um, there is more and more uh, interaction between the different projects which are which don't have to go through the 10th central project in, in Paris but radial project where we can communicate together and see how to uh, how to improve uh, our operations yes so in fact there are two major vectors there is the one from the mother company to the subsidiaries and there are the sub subsidiaries uh, between themselves who are cooperating to, uh, to improve their operation. What are your views for Transport Month? My view is that the rail transport is uh, really the future for this country. Uh, I've been driving a bit across the country and I can see many trucks on the road that could be replaced by train. I know there are freight trains already, mm. but we, we need to increase that because 
with one train we can transport the equivalent of, uh, of what 20 or 25 trucks are transporting. With RATP and one subsidiary of RATP, we have been involved on the Euro Tunnel project uh, between France and uh, England. On one train, going through the channel under the, under the sea, you can transport up to 18 trucks. So the trucks are boarded on the train and then they travel the, the sea and then they get on the other side uh, safely. Mm. So this means we, we can also imagine uh, in terms of freight, it is not my specialty, but what we could imagine is to have a combination of rail and road and in some area where the road is congested, is uh, loading the, tra the, 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 the bus, the, the tr sorry, <laughs> loading lo 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 the, tr <laughs> the, tr the trucks on a train, yes. crossing this area, mm. which is difficult to, to cross, like for instance the N2, yes. okay? And then when there is better infrastructure for the road, mm. uh, the, 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 the trucks are unloaded from the train and can uh, deliver to the harbor or to wherever or to the, to the supplier. So one thing for the, uh, for the freight and I think for the rail, uh, I think the existing network uh, needs to, and it's being refurbished mm. and I think uh, the authorities uh, can invest more on the, on the railway transport because this is a transport with, which is a cheap compared to the road when you have to buy a vehicle to maintain a vehicle and can transport you safely mm. on long distances. So you, you decrease the risk of accident and the, and the safety issues here. With, with, with what I have seen from the, the, the conference I have attended here, is that the, the, the railway infrastructure here in this country is the most developed in the world continent. So I think they are the, the roots, the foundation. We have got experts. I've got a lot of expert people, not only on the how train, huh? uh, for the other operators. We have got operators within BOC who are coming from uh, these operators also. Yeah. They have movement of, of, of people uh, during their career. So there is a lot of expertise. Uh, there is a good foundation of the network, so the, the basics are there. Mm. Uh, the, the manpower is there, the knowledge is there. So, yeah, it, it, it should be developed more efficiently. Yeah. I think so too. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, you for your time. Merci. <laughs> And thank you for joining me for this coffee with the editor.